Hey everybody, Dan here, PA Country Cluckers. What is the most important thing when brewing beer? Stay tuned, find out. Before we get too far into anything, uh, please, right here, hit the subscribe button if you like this. There should be a little thumbs up down here. If you don't see a thumbs up, I'm sorry. And if you don't like this content, well, maybe hit a thumb down. It's, this is all for you. So what do you need to get started? Quite honestly, you need two things. Well, I need a few things. First is you're gonna need a bucket. Nothing special about this bucket. I did purchase it from a uh, from a brew shop before I moved to Pennsylvania. So, yeah, this is a little bit more expensive. I think this was twelve bucks for the block for the um, bucket being inspected by our quality assurance inspector. Here it comes with a lid. Comes with a couple other things. None of which is incredible. You're going to have to do with this brew is you're going to have to take the bucket full five gallons full put it up high and then siphon it down to another bucket whether that be a glass container or another one of these and they sell special siphons for uh, doing that etc i've purchased this guy right here this is a craft -a brew I think I spent two, three hundred dollars for this. But the nice thing about it is, I can open it up and allow the hop, allow the water, the hops, and etc., to flow through. And it has a lid with uh, all the gaskets and seals already. Pretty much, this pro, this is, if you ask me, the way to go. I will say you don't need that piece, fancy piece of equipment. Two buckets, you're good. What's this? Hmm. Huh. This is where I'm going to put my sanitizer. It's a no wash, or no rinse sanitizer. And I'll show that here in a minute. But what I'm doing is I'm cleaning this out. What I like to do is the process takes a few weeks. And this is only going to be one, video one of a three part series. So I'm going to take and have the, sanitize, the sanitizer ready for all three weeks. Brew one bag, be done with it, the sanitizer. It's a couple teaspoons to a gallon. Or if you chose, you could just, whenever you're ready, make up a thing of sanitizer. Really doesn't matter how you do it. Do anything, I mean, any which way to skin a cat, I suppose. So the sanitizer bucket is clean. Yeah, that's just water in there. Again, QA tester. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the sanitizer and we're going to mix it up. Okay, legal disclaimer, by no means am I an expert in um, chemical engineering, nor the chemicals in the sanitizers. So I'm going to tell you to follow the directions on the back. The directions say one tablespoon of this particular powder into one gallon of warm water. Well, I don't have a warm specifically on my sink. So what I've been doing is I'll do a gallon of hot and a gallon of cold. That makes warm. And then put two, te two teaspoons in. Mmm, egg, yummy. Nothing super fancy here, just a pitcher. Has one gallon. I fill it up with one gallon mark. Then we're going to take and pour it in. This is hot water. And now what a cold. We'll cut that out. Keep editing. And then we'll throw some of this in. I usually make five of them because that's what it takes to cover some of the implements that I'm going to be using. Four gallons of warm water. One tablespoon. Oh, this stuff is crusty. Mm. 
this makes a fine powder this particular brand i've used it many times when i trust and it sucks to breathe it in too Four. So, first part, and making the sanitizer. This particular one needs the warm water because you can hear it's still kind of creepy down there. So I will get this all nice and cleaned up, and after that, I will show you some of the equipment that I use. Because at this point, we haven't brewed a thing. So what equipment do you absolutely have to have? Absolutely have to have the zoom off. You have to have a couple buckets, which I have mine over there because I don't use them anymore. You have to have a big stock pot. This particular one's a five gallon stock pot. I don't need anywhere near that much. You do need a few gallons. With a lid, you need an airlock. You could get this at any, you can get it on Midwest Supplies, you can get it on a few other places. I recommend finding a, a local person, uh, a local place that's selling kits, selling brewing supplies, and purchase from them. Keep it local. Some optional equipment, which is important to have, but not, you don't need it for the beer to turn out. This is a hydrometer. This measures how much, how many impurities are in the water. When I put this in, a, uh, a reading of one is pure filtered water. I don't even have that out of my well. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the amount of impurities when we start and when we end to determine how much alcohol. This is what's called a wine thief or beer thief, wart thief. You push it down, it opens up, allows this to fill up so that you can have the hydrometer in here and you can read it. Not needed. However, it's kind of cool if you could tell your friends, hey, this is a 7% alcohol beer. Not needed also, but it's really cool to have is this bad boy right here. I think I spent 60 bucks on this. It's a wort chiller. What happens is cold water goes in through this tube right here. It circles around, it absorbs the, the heat, and then comes out this other tube right here doesn't touch anything but this piece part has to be sanitized another thing that's nice to have is a, a beaker 250 mil not needed it's just nice to have in case you're having problems with the wine thief you can put this guy in there and tell the hydrometer or measure the hydrometer never mind does that pass muster baby kitty <laughs> If you're purchasing all this as a kit, highly, highly recommend if you don't have that craft of brew in the corner over there, is to get this guy. This is a pump that will allow you to draw the wort. Wort is what you call the boiled hops, the sugars and etc. to uh, get it from one bucket to another. You will need this. You will also need some extra, extra uh, PVC tubing. Now, let's get all this stuff in the sanitizer pieces that i'm gonna have to have today this guy right here this is a air stop this prevents all the bacteria laden air that we live in getting into your work there's lots of sugar in there and any foreign yeasts bacteria are going to just thrive in there and make your beer taste like le poo poo we don't want that so we're going to throw that in the sanitizer and going to clean off our pot because the pot <sighs> Looks like it could use some help. All right, so this is the next thing we need. This is the kit. I'm more of a kit brewer. You purchase this from your local shop. You can get it at Amazon, you can get it, etc. But it makes five gallons of beer. This one was 34, 35.95. It's a wit, wit beer, which is a wheat beer, roughly translated from German. And it's very close to Blue Moon because it has orange zest in it. So we'll open this guy up 
and we'll take a look. We'll pull out the directions, lose our man card, and get the beer brewing. If you can follow the directions on a macaroni and cheese, you can make beer. Very difficult to open one hand in. What you have here is, doo -doo 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 -doo. they're calling this dry malt extract. Okay, cool. More dry malt extract. And what we were after, directions. But you'll also see in here, yeah, some paper. You're gonna see flaked wheat. You're gonna see the other ingredients that you need. You're gonna find some caps. Now, you hear me talk about sugar. So, here's the thing. Here's the sugar pre-packaged already from the malts. What happens is all these guys right here, these crushed uh, wheats and stuff, they have sugar in them. As the seed is germinating, the starch changes to sugar, and that's what we leach out of the, uh, the grain to make our beer with. So this has already been done. So this is this in concentrate. Uh, some spice pack, lady sock, wait, lady sock? Hmm. Hops, more hops. Priming sugar. Priming sugar is the sugar that you put in right before you bottle. The idea is, is that the, the um, yeast will still be in there, but it's gonna be dormant because there's nothing to eat. So you're gonna throw some sugar in there and it'll carbonate. All right, so here's the directions. The directions say, yeah, I gotta really sign up. You, you wanna start with the recommended procedures. Recommended procedures says, write down the brew date, which we will here in a little bit. We're gonna sanitize the equipment, which we've got that work going. Uh, steep grains, see the step to convert, or steep to convert directions to continue. Then we're going to boil in our uh, liquid malt extract, this guy right here. And then we're going to follow the schedule. The schedule is, uh, do, do, do. Um, um, huh. I didn't read the schedule. Where's the schedule? Uh, do, 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 do. Um, take gravity ring. Okay, so six days to convert. All right, so the schedule that they're talking about here just occurred to me is this brew day schedule right here, which we're going to do that in a bit. First thing we're going to do, since we've already read the instructions, is and sanitize, we're gonna now steep the grains. This guy right here, which I'll put it up. And we're gonna go from there. After we do the steeped grains, we'll do the liquid malt extract. So. So in the lady's pantyhose that was in there, I took following the directions and put the flaked wheat and the crushed pail into this. Now, we're gonna throw this in here. What we're hoping for is a couple of things. One, that there's enough water to cover this. Need all the water. Two, we're going to rinse out the sugars into the wort. And you can actually see some of the starches going in there now. And what we wanna do is prevent this from reaching over 170 degrees. Reason for that is these grains have acids in them called tannic acids. They're very bitter and they will make your beer taste nasty. So we wanna keep this right around, looking at the instructions, we're gonna keep the temperature right around 155 degrees. A little bit easy-ish with the electric, I don't know. So right now the temperature of the water is 67, which is, I mean, it's pretty standard coming out of a well. Also at this point, the tin of liquid malt extracts, I put it in hot water. And the reason for that is, is that it's a thick syrup. 
warmer it is, easier it is it's gonna come out. So while we're waiting for everything to boil, we're gonna let the liquid malt extracts get warm. So we're just at 100 degrees now, 50 more to go. Once we hit 150, it needs to soak for 20 minutes. So there we go, 103, 110, 111. Coming back, take a look. Look at all those starches and yummy yummies. Gonna be in my beer, in my belly. 135, got a little steam going off here. Awesome. So we're now at 152. With these inductive type cooktops, they remain hot after you've turned them off. So you'll notice I've already turned this one off. We'll keep an eye on the temperature. If it gets too hot, we have cold water back here. It's not going to cool off too much because we I will keep an eye on the temperature. If I need to turn, turn it back up, I will definitely do that. So now that it's 150, let's go ahead and set a timer. Hey Siri, set a timer for 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes and counting. Oh, QA tester number three is stopped by. 12 minutes remaining. Maintaining pretty good temperature. Mm, smells like water. Timer's getting ready to go off any second now. We are at 151 degrees. Doing just great. 10, nine. All right, so after the 20 minutes soak at 150 degrees, we need to drain the grains there. Drain the grains. That rhymes. Minutes later, we're still here draining grains. So now that we've drained the grains, uh, next step is to get it bo boiling. So we've moved from steep grains to start to boil. So bring it to a gentle, warm, roaring boil. And then we're going to add the LME, which is still sitting in that. 30 minutes later. Here we are. Gentle boil. Next step says uh, we're going to do put the liquid malt extract in the boiling wort. And then we're going to uh, continue, continuously stir. Problem is, when you pour that sugar directly down to that water, it's not going to dissolve. It'll get down at the bottom. It'll burn and it'll make a funny taste in your beer. So I'm going to put the phone down and put the liquid malt extract in. See you in a minute. All right, so we got the liquid malt extract in here. Next part is to let it boil again. Then we'll start adding the hops and spices. And that's all right. So we're back up to a boil. The next step is to follow the schedule here. So we need to add the one ounce of Williamette hops. So we look here, not they. There we go, one ounce. So there's only one ounce in here. We're going to, we need one ounce. Here we go. Four enough, maybe. So here's the thing with the hops. If you were to dump this all in all at once, we'd be cleaning off the sink or the counter here. Just put them in, watching to make sure that it doesn't rise too much. Oh, look, there it goes. Do, do, do. Danger, danger. All right. So the one ounce of hops is in. We need to set a timer for 40 minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for 40 minutes. Okay, 40 minutes and counting. Awesome. 
give this a stir or two. And this is when your house starts smelling of the, uh, the boiling hops. Yum. 40 minutes later. So next step is to add the remaining two pounds of dried malt extract into this and the spice rack. So spice pack, pardon me, spice pack for the win. And for the next trip, I'll get all that sugar into the boiling pot with one hand. We probably should have been stirring that. It'll be all right. One pound. Try to melt that back. Oh, there's a timer. It's never happened before. So here we are back in the kitchen. Timer's done. Next step is to add one ounce of CZ Zaz hops, which is what we have here. I've already opened it up. The CZ Zaz hops. Again with hops. If you were to put them in all at once, we'd have an explosive mess. But a few at a time, good to go. And then the directions say to boil for an additional 10 minutes. Actually, five minutes, my mistake. See you in five minutes. So after this is done, the next thing we have to do is to cool the wart. This is when it's the most dangerous because this is the time when we're going to have issues with airborne bacteria and stuff. So we want to minimize the amount of splashing and etc. So I move this over here. It's very close to the sink. So timer goes off in a couple seconds. See, actually, see then. So here's our wart in the sink. I would just caution against putting direct water from your sink into your wart. So next, I'm going to get the chiller in there, get the thermometer going, and off we go. So we're slowly, I say slowly because we're not, we're getting rid of some of the temperature. We're at 109. I'd like to be at 100, but it's just being picky. 90 is where I'd really like to be, but my hand is getting sore. So we're going to go for 100, and when that happens, we'll put it up into the craft brew and add water to the water line. So we're at about right, the right temperature. Getting ready to put the wort into the container up here. This is just a spray bottle with some of the sanitizer. Just one last go over here. One last go over on the lid. Make sure we get the seal in there. Perfect. All right, next step, the wort will be in the craft brew. So this is what the bottom of the warp barrel looks like. This is what it looks like when you miss. So, and this is what it looks like now. So I went ahead and added from five to five and a half gallons. This gives it some breathing room when everything is in there. When I say everything, I'm talking about the yeast. We're 81 right now. So um, at this point, you see down here is trub. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try, I'm going to close the valve, take the trub out, and then re-sanitize the container. 
put it back in, see how much more stuff we get. Normally the way you would handle this is when you're transferring from the black into your barrel, which is back over there, you would leave the trub in the container, which I left a lot, but this is what it looks like when it came out. We'll open up the valve, see how much more stuff we get. Icky. We're 78. We want to be a little cooler than that before we get going with pitching the yeast. When I say pitching the yeast, we're going to add it. So I'm going to take some more trub out. See you in a minute. So I mentioned that we're going to take the hydrometer and we're going to check to see what the specific value is. And we are looking at 1.06. Zero. Wish you could see that, but it's one six zero one six one zero six zero. So really, the last step was clean up. Got everything pretty well wiped down. You'll notice the airlock on the top. So you notice the water line there as carbon dioxide goes out, it'll bubble. There's not enough pressure there. Anyway, so it's too warm today, so I'm gonna pitch the yeast tomorrow. Pitching the yeast is just putting the yeast in it. So when that happens, I'll bring y'all back. 